Our guests and visitors here this morning, please fill out a visitor card. As you see it in front of you, drop it in the plate as it passes you. Bye. We welcome all of you that worship with us via television and YouTube. We're glad you're here. At this time, I invite you to stand with me together as we confess our sins and receive God's forgiveness. The words are printed in your bulletins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one who fashions us, the one who heals us, the one who reforms us again and again. Let us confess our sin, calling for God's transforming power. Source of all life, we confess that we have not allowed your grace to set us free. We fear that we're not good enough. We hear your word of love freely given to us, yet we expect others to earn it. We turn the church inward rather than moving it outward. Forgive us, stir us, reform us to be a church powered by love, willing to speak for what is right, act for what is just, and seek the healing of your whole creation. Amen. God hears our cry and sends the Spirit to change us, empower our lives in the world. Our sins are forgiven. God's love is unconditional, and we are raised up as God's people who will always be made new in the name of Jesus Christ. Please remain standing for our gathering hymn number 836 in the Red Book 836. The Lord be with you. Please join me for the prayer of the day found on your celebrate inserts. O Lord God, and live in and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. 
Our reading for this morning comes to us from Paul's letter to the Romans, recorded in the 12th chapter. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering and persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to the stranger. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you really are. And do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought of what is noble in the sight of all. Now, if it's possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, for leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Now if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink, for by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. At this time, we'll be singing the wheels on the bus go round and round, and all the adults are asked to come forward. No, I'm just kidding. I got you, though. Now you're all paying attention. So let's sing and have the kids come forward. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round. Round and round the wheels on the bus go round and round all through the town. The driver on the bus goes beep 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 beep. Keep singing beep beep beep. The driver on the bus nothing beep beep all through the town. Oh, the screen can go down. That's what I meant. Good morning, friends. Okay. All right. Well, it's good to see you, my friends. And what did you bring along? Backpacks. That is just awesome. I love it. So why did you bring your backpacks with? Chris, it's Backpack Blessing Sunday. I see. So is it always, always, always fun to go to school? No. It's kind of fun the first day, maybe, right? But then sometimes it's, it gets difficult because you had a long day the day before and you're tired. And sometimes you might be a little nervous because you didn't do your homework or you didn't complete it or you didn't really understand everything. So not all days are good and happy days. But in today's reading, God says to us that no matter what, no matter what, he will be with us to help us through the day. Even if it's a day where we struggle, he will be there walking before us, in front of us, walking behind us, and walking alongside of us. So when he walks in front of us, he says to us, I will lead you and we have to follow. We're invited to follow. When he walks behind us, he says, it's okay, just go. Even if it's a little scary, you'll be okay. And when he walks alongside of us, he's like a good friend or like your mom and your dad or grandma and grandpa who hold your hand when you're just a little nervous and says, it's okay we walk together. Now did I 
Did you notice that I didn't tell you that he will ever carry you? He'll carry you at times, but not for school. Because he already went. And who needs to go to school yet to learn and to grow in your minds? There we go. So you got to do it. He doesn't send you off alone, but he won't do it for you. Can you send mom and dad to school? No? How would that be? If they would just go to school for you and you get to stay home, what do you think they all do when they stay home? Sit around, drink coffee, and eat cookies. Oh, they am besides drinking coffee, eating cookies, they watch movies, right? See what you do? They just have all that fun. Well, they really don't. You, you don't like coffee, so you're not jealous about that part. So they really don't do that. They actually had gone to school before, and now many of them work. And even when they stay home, they work. So that when you come home, everything is ready to be a family. So when we have a bad day at school, we should also be thinking that maybe mom and dad's day wasn't all that good either. And it helps that we talk with each other and sit down and say, you know, that's what we do at our house. I had a real good thing happen to me in school today, but I also had something that challenged me. How about your day? And I'm sure your mom and dad can tell you something too that they had something they really enjoyed and some parts that were a real challenge. And if we be honest with each other, then we will find out that our lives aren't so different and that we actually are understanding each other most of the time. So at this time, before we hand you your, your backpack token, I would like us all for the prayer and the blessing to turn to our bulletins. If you would please join me. Gracious God, you have promised to keep us safe and holy. Be present with these children and young adults as another school year begins. Give them an open and eager mind. Protect all your children from temptation and guide them with your love. Amen. May the love of Jesus be with you on your first day of school and throughout the year, and take our love with you. Amen. Now, I like to just say a couple things to the token, and that is, I told you that the picture in the center of the, the zero there is Martin Luther. That's our middle name, right? Trinity Lutheran church. So our middle name is Lutheran, and that goes back to Martin Luther. He had some new thoughts about what church is be, and his biggest thought was that we can't do anything to be okay with God, but that he loves us no matter what, and if we understand that God does everything, we'll be okay. And so there's the Bible verse on the back, and on November 1st, that's a long, long time away, you are all invited to be part of a children's choir in Sioux Falls to sing Jesus Loves Me. And I know that you can sing Jesus Loves Me. No one of you can say you can't sing it because we sing it every Sunday. So the more the merrier. If you like to have your children be part of that children's choir, there's hundreds of young adults and children there. The top of the age is, I think, 18. But there is no limit. As long as they can sing and stand in a the place, they're good. They can sing. But they should call us. Or they but should call sign us up. prior. If we you need, like to have really your sign up yeah. before October when? 9th. 9th. Yep. Okay. So I have my acolytes hold the baskets. And as you guys return back to your seats, you pass one of my trusted acolytes. There we go. You can stand right here, and you come with me right here. And then you get to pick one, right? There we go. Are you ready? 
Keep going back to your spots. Thank you for coming up. I will have the ushers as you exit today hand out the catechisms, one per family. Remember, that was a generous gift. And in the front, as I told you before, are instructions or suggestions on how you can actually use the catechism in your daily life at home. So. Bottom. No, um, <laughs> I just would like uh, to ask you to take your bulletin and turn to the second reading uh, because I think it's so familiar to us that we should read it one more time. Uh, just one verse. Um, oh, no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Oh, no one anything except to love. God's grace and peace to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'd like you to keep that verse in mind, and um, you may come back um, today while I preach to that verse, or um, even take it home and think about what that means. Because the biggest danger about that verse, oh, no one anything except love is that we heard it so many times that you are you are already asleep right so i tried to to think about what it means yes already oh yeah um we thank you god i couldn't hear it so let's let's think about what it means uh in our own context but i have to go back to my own context the former scientist and uh, physicist Albert Einstein, referring to a critical period in world history when the Nazis in Germany became more and more powerful, once said that he, Albert Einstein, at one point in his life had no interest at all in the life of the church. However, watching what was going on in Nazi Germany changed his mind. Albert Einstein became deeply interested in our Christian faith. Remember, he was Jew, but he became really interested in our Christian faith. And so the question is, why? You want to guess? Why that sudden interest in the Christian faith? Well, when Hitler came into power, Einstein inspected opposition, great opposition to the Nazis from the university community. But that opposition was not forthcoming. He also expected that intellectuals like artists, po poets, scientists, or authors would oppose Hitler and his people. But most of all did not. It's fair to say that the main group who did oppose a lunacy called Nazism came from the Bekennten Kirche, the Confessional Church of Germany, founded by the German theologian and pastor and modern-day martyr and Lutheran, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He founded it as a witness, a Christian Lutheran witness against Nazism. So why do I mention that? Well, compared to most of Americans or American Lutherans 
I was raised in a Lutheran family that is convinced, it's in my DNA, that our Christian faith and politics don't always match. They are opposite worldviews sometimes. But our Christian faith, nevertheless, has always a political dimension. That doesn't mean that you have to be involved in a political party, but it has always, no matter what we do in this world, has a political, worldly dimension. You know, the way how we relate to others. My family knew this, and so, therefore, my grandpa and my dad and like Constance's family did not um, buy into um, that notion that Jewish people are unworthy. And therefore, my grandpa, for instance, did hide Jewish people and tried to help them to escape to the Swiss, well, through the Swiss German border into um, what they perceived at that time to be a safe place. And like Bonhoeffer, my grandpa and my dad both ended in labor camps or concentration camps. Why? And I think it's really important because their moral compass was shaped by Bible passages, by Bible passages that we just read today, where it says, let me read it to you one more time, let no debt remain outstanding, no debt, except the continuing debt to love one another. Dear friends, today's second reading speaks to us of our need for walking in love and walking in God's light. Love and light should be the defining factor of any Christian. And how the world needs love today. In that sense, the old cliche, and I think it's a cliche, that it's almost boring to hear it, the old cliche is still true if people and societies would walk in love, the world would be a much, much better place. There would be no hate. There would be no crime. There would be no disruption or break up in so many families. There would be no terrorism. There would be no bigotry. Oh, no one anything except no one, emphasis on no one, except the continuing debt to love one another. Talking about debt, I don't know if you were ever in debt, probably, but I think it's a big difference if you borrow money from a friend or from a family member, rather than an institution like a bank, right? It's a big difference, at least for me. If I would owe money to you, right, every time I would see you, I would think, oh no, I have to pay it back, right? I, I owe you $20, or I owe you $100. I don't think it's the same feeling when you walk across the bank that lent you money, right? I mean, when you think about your bank that gave you money for your mortgage, you probably don't think that, oh no, I owe them something, I have to do everything I, have, um, to, I can to pay them back, right? It doesn't hurt you as much as if you owe money um, to a friend, I think. Maybe I'm alone. But the point I'm trying to make is this. You are always reminded that you are constantly in debt to pay it back. 
And that same feeling, right, that we should have in regard to money when it comes to friends, that same feeling we should ha have in regard to love toward everyone we encounter. Oh, no one, anything except love. As Christians, we are in debt to each person. Everyone we meet, everyone we encounter, even people we don't meet or encounter. Not because they look good, not because they can do something for us, not even because I like them. It has nothing to do with it. It has something to do that they are created in the image of God. And that's why I owe them the best that I can give them. Just so that I owe, regardless of the person I meet, or the, regardless of the relationship I have with that person, Christians are under the obligation to love. Now just um, stay with me. <laughs> just think about you are a Congress member, right? And you have to deal with the dreamers, right? With the um, Dream Act of 2017. You have to make a decision. What do you do with 800,000 illegal or 1 million illegal children who came to this country and who don't know any other home than United States? What do you do? Well, if you are law abiding, right, it's easy. The law is always just, right? And so you can do whatever you want. You can say, well, in accordance with the law, it's really black and white. They don't belong here. But if you are a Christian congressman, it's more complicated than that, right? Because then you start to define yourself through love, which is not always lawful. And it makes it much more challenging. The law always, always, it doesn't matter if it's the Old Testament law or our law, demands what? Justice. But love demands mercy. And I think that's why it's so difficult. You know, if, if you think that in the political aspect, it's almost impossible to live up to that standard every day. And I think that's why I'm glad that I have a God who is a God of grace, who looks down to me knowing that I cannot live up to that standard only if I'm touched with his grace. But I cannot do it by myself. Christians are under the obligation to love, and sometimes we fail. That kind of obligation is extremely difficult to live out on a daily basis. Just think about it. Dietrich Bonhoeffer paid with his life for trying to put into practice what Jesus demands from us. But you don't have to go so far. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about my brother. I have an American brother. We lived together for, for, for four years. He, um, he came to us as an exchange student when I was 14. And we became really close. We are not blood related. But he is um, the closest, what, what I would consider to be a brother for me. He lives in Texas, in Houston, and he lost two homes. I mean, they are totally, totally destroyed um, in Rockport. That's near Corpus Christi, where the Hurricane Harvey came in. 
So he lost two homes totally. And when I talked to him the last time, his entire neighborhood in Houston was flooded, except his home. His home was probably one inch from being flooded. It was in that context that he told me that he never experienced God in a more powerful way than doing those events. Because what happened was, you know, all his neighbors got flooded. Their life was in danger. And his home was the only home standing. And so he opened up his doors. Everybody would do this probably. And he ended up with about 40 or 50 people living in his home. Strangers. People he would never, ever associate with. People from different backgrounds, different political views, uh, different languages. It's a very international community. People, people from different religions. But they all ended up there. And they are like a family. So when you remember, when you go home, remember, Christian love ought to be universal. And I think that's what Charles, my brother, experienced in those events. A Christian is called to love more than family. I have to love more than the patriotic citizen of my own country. We are obligated to love everyone, regardless of the color of the skin, the language they speak, the ethnic group from which they derive. In that sense, I hope and I pray that everyone who comes here to Trinity Lutheran Church will feel, feel welcome, right? That's one of our core values. Each one who enters this church should get a sense that you are welcome, no matter who you are, no matter what kind of worldview you have because we are so much more than that. We are Christ's children, made in his image. So may God's love define you and carry you to the next week. God bless you all. Amen. Let us stand together and sing number 656. 656 in the Red Book.
I invite you to be seated, and at this time, I will read the names, apologize for any mispronunciation of the teachers and educational staff for the 2017-18 Sunday School and Educational Year. You may follow me in your bulletins. And if, you are, if your name is called up, would you please gather up here in the front? Lana Johnson, Leanne Ruring, Amy Thrun, Kenna Nybird, Holly Van Dyke, Melissa Obzal, and Amanda Benson. Chelsea Gerdes, Danielle Jensen, Caitlin Maddows, Christine Saar, Dana, ha Dana Hoff, Lizzie Ellingson, Marin Marinda Kern, Kelly Bender, Haley Delzer, Maddie Townsend, Tanya Meadows, Nikki Pula, Tara Engels, Stacy Riedel, Marissa Nussbaum, Melody Hansen, Kim Kern, Susan Farrell Poncelet, Christy Layston, Stacy Ostis, Julie Jones, Megan Schneider, Amber Coombs, Gary, Gary Eggard, Julie Sims, Bridget Van Leer, Lori Engbretson, Carolyn Feige, Stacy Ewelling, Ryan Townsend, Chris Souter, Amy Schaefer, Amy Townsend, Kirk Christensen, Tim Wahlberg, Batsy Chamber, Stephanie Kusmark, Lori Schultz, Dan Lemmy, Adam Shaw, Pastor Dirk, Becky Brown, Tammy Christensen, Stacy Riedel, Amy Winrow, Kim Brunt, Confirmation Guides, Kate Shaw, Laura Olson, Dana Hoff, Stephanie Ryan, Kristen Morse, Laura Ursland, and Rob Buckholz, and Sid Gilbrunson. Now that's a lot of people. And at one point or the other, I know that you answered Sandy's phone number. <laughs> Got to be careful when you do that. Sandy is downstairs getting the picnic ready, so please join us for that. But um, she has called all those many wonderful people. So I know she's not going to hear us, but when you do see her, just tell her a thank you. That's a lot of hours of work. I thank you for what you do. At this time, would you please join me in your bulletins? Um, there is a congregational part <coughs> in there. Gracious God, we gather as a community to raise before you the educational ministry of this congregation. Keep each one of us in the covenant of our baptism that we may eagerly seek to know your word and your will. Help us to live faithful lives and be eager agents of your transforming power as we go and make your disciples in the world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And then below is a thank you from Sandy that she writes to each one of you. We're very grateful for your service and your dedication to this Sunday School program. The peace of the Lord be with you always. God's people share God's peace. as we are invited to place the offering in the offering gifts. Our offertory will then be number 884.
open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. We pray for the church universal. Reconcile our differences. Forgive our divisions. Unite us at your table. Hear us, O oh God. For your creation, increase our stewardship of all that you have given to us. Let the earth flourish for those who come after us. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for peace in this world and conflicts among nations. Help leaders and citizens truly to listen to one another and to act for the good of all. Teach us by your example. Hear us, O oh God. For all those in need, bind up our hurts, heal divisions in our families, friendships, and neighborhoods. Comfort those who need your special care. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for the people in Houston, in Texas, in Florida, who are impacted by Irma and Harvey. Please make your presence known and protect them from all harm. Open our hearts and minds that we can be an agent of your reconciliation and rebuilding efforts. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for Trinity. Make us signs of your love and forgiveness in this community and in the world. Help us to grow in our love for one another. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God, creator of all things, speaking reformation into being, Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, raising the dead. Holy Spirit, living voice, calling and enlightening the church. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. I have a few announcements. Um, the first one is, we will have a pork feed, thanks to Sandy and her people, um, between 10.15 and 12.30, maybe 10 o'clock, maybe a little bit earlier, right? Is that right, 10.15? It says here, I'm not so sure, but I thought it's between services, it starts already. And then um, on Monday, September 11, from 5 to 8, and there's a pizza fundraiser for our national youth gathering um, at Pizza Ranch. So um, if you would like to support our, our kids, um, you may stop by. And then there is um, something about the DSU luncheon. Yep, the DSU luncheon is going to happen on Saturday the 23rd and we need your helping hands. There are sign-up sheets in the narthex, right, when you come through the double doors. Um, there are still lots of space for you to sign your name to an activity that you can participate in or things that are needed that you can offer to bring in preparation of the luncheon. This is an all-congregational effort, and the funds that, um, that are raised are going to proceed mission work locally and as far as the ends of the earth. So please come and support this mission effort. Also, um, next week we'll be needing your help from the computer. 
We are have we are in um, the pro in a visioning process with a company by the name of Kairos. They do nothing more than help congregations shape in and form their vision um, in preparation to capital campaigns. As you can see, there might be one coming your way. Um, if we don't want our building to deteriorate, we need to love and care for it. But we also need to love and care. Besides for the building, we need to fill it with ministry and folks. So Kairos will help us to sharpen our ministry focus and therefore we'll be launching an online service uh, survey that's called MAP, uh, Mission Assessment Plan. And you can participate and anyone that you know is a member, it takes you 10 minutes at most. You 15. can 15 if you're a slow reader and need to think your answers over. Okay, but that's not what they ask you to do. What they ask you to do is when they ask you a question to just kind of answer it and then move on. Don't go back and rethink it. But what it will, what you need to do and where I need your help is number one, you need to take the assessment once you get, Kate, you get lots of emails from Kate and please don't tell her, stop sending me your blank emails. That was not Kate to authorize that, okay? So therefore Kate should not get your wrath. If you don't like the emails, talk to me. But this is very helpful in shaping the ministry that we have. It doesn't help us if we have a beautiful building at one point, but we have none of you here anymore because you really don't like what your church is doing. You are the church. We need to hear from you. You need to let us know. And the best way to do it is through the survey that comes your way. Now, I understand not everybody likes computers. We will have paper copies that you fill out anonymously while you're here or while you come to an activity here. And then you hand it in and we enter your data into the computer. Which would cost, you, uh, well, it could, would cost more for us because every time, it, it would take us a long time to do this. So we'll please have, take it to the computer. We'll have computer stations at one point set up where you can just sit down while you're already here and um, we'll help you take the survey without looking over your shoulder. So please, please, please. Um, I will not stop talking about it until October 19th. Whenever I meet you and see you, this is your chance to avoid me, I will ask you whether or not you took that survey. We need about 150 at least. And, we and need I'm it gonna, from a real I was going to show the consultant we can do better than 150 if we're yeah. 1,700 members. But, but we need it from different people. I mean, if you think I'm not involved in the church, this is really important that you tell us what's going on in your life because we believe that God is at work in your life, right? And that he moves through your life, through your eyes, through your thoughts. So we need to know where you are at. Um, it doesn't matter if you are the most involved person here or not involved at all. We need your voice. Yes. And then later, right, you cannot say, well, you know, I wasn't involved. Uh, yes, you had a chance. It's kind of like voting. It's you probably, can't complain the next six months what probably. you get if you didn't vote. So the next so six the months, same here. The next six months, I, I don't, that's not, I'm not kidding, right? About the most exciting and most challenging times in Trinity. Because it's going to be great. It's truly really incredible. Okay. So you heard us. Until October 19th, that's your job. To come and take that survey. We'll let you know once it's up and going. I also are still looking for some folks who like to write a short Advent devotional. Um, instructions are downstairs. We need your thoughts on hopes and expectations as we're writing short paragraphs um, to inspire others as they journey through Lent. It's a congregational gift from one member to the next. Um, I can give you more details, but won't hold you hostage any longer, except that you need to take that survey. All right, sending him, Earth and all stars, please stand. Seven. 31, 731.